and welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. We're going behind the scenes with the new Broadway musical, Anastasia. It's full of intrigue, romance, and adventure. Then switching gears, Julie, great news for those with diabetes. There's now a better way to manage this disease. Great news there. We're on location with more. And The Balancing Act starts right now. Broadway Balances America brought to you by Broadway Across America, bringing the best of Broadway to a city near you. It's time now for Broadway Balances America, our series that takes you behind the scenes of some of the most beloved Broadway musicals as they appear across the country in your local theater. Today, Anastasia, a sweeping story that follows Anya, a brave young woman who set out to find the story of her past. Along the way, she meets a series of colorful characters as she learns who she really is and who she could be. Amber Milt takes us back in time to see how a street urchin makes a royal transformation. Thanks, ladies. Inspired by those beloved films, Anastasia will transport you from the twilight of the Russian Empire to the glamour of Paris in the 1920s as one brave young woman sets out to learn about her past. It is a spectacular new musical about discovering who you are and defining who you're meant to be. This sweeping new Broadway production has audiences believing in the power of home, love, and family, something that Broadway's Anya, Christy Altamar, is excited to share with Lila Coogan as she prepares to play Anya on tour. As you wear this crown, which I've gotten to wear for the last year, um, never forget that this story means so much to so many people. I know that you're just going to be the light for them and, and the love for them um, and the excitement for them as they walk into the theater night after night and get to sit down and experience this show. With stunning backdrops, dazzling costumes, and a soaring score, Anastasia brings to life the story of Anya, who may or may not be Russian royalty Anastasia. Anya's not your typical princess, so tell us a little bit about her story. Yeah, so she's rebellious. Um, she comes from a place where uh, women aren't supposed to be speaking up and they're kind of just supposed to follow along and she does not do that. She's headstrong and she tells it like it is and says what she wants. It's an adventure about a young girl trying to find her place in the world and ultimately who she is. Is this relatable to you, especially at this age? It's super relatable, I think, to any young adult or young woman like trying to find their place. Um, especially to me, this is, you know, a big change in my life, so it's going to be cool finding my footing and figuring out, like, where I fit in. The exquisitely designed costumes help transport audiences from the streets of St. Petersburg to Paris in the 1920s. So the costumes in this are just jaw-dropping, and not only do they span different time periods, but also different continents. So how did you use the costumes to help tell that story? So this is an amazing opportunity for a costume designer to flex their muscles. There's such a huge range of things. Um, the tricks that we employ as costume designers are color palette, uh, silhouette, cheating within the silhouette to make it appealing to the modern eye. An example of employing color palette is I use famous paintings. In the Paris ballet scene, I use Gustave Klimt's paintings. So now you have the sea of gold and brown, and from that you have Anastasia arriving, making a jaw-dropping appearance in her blue dress, so she will completely stand out in color and in silhouette within, within the world. The transformation for Anastasia, uh, we go from uh, a more covered, wintry silhouette that is a, a little more dowdy and homely into uh, something very rich and very confident, and I think uh, the pinnacle for me of that is when she arrives in Paris in her, her suit. So when people come to see this show, your artwork, what do you want them to, what do you want them to come away feeling? Um, I want them to feel empowered. I want them to come away with um, feeling like they can do anything, just like this powerful woman in the story. The costumes are complemented by the beautiful background. With the LED screens, which we embedded not only on the back wall, but in the side turntables, it really gives a vast variety of looks. This show couldn't have happened two years ago. The technology's finally caught up to where we can really manipulate it and integrate it. Holds me safe. 
While the animated movie had memorable melodies, composers Stephen Flaherty and Lynn Ahrens expanded the score with several new songs just for the stage. In the musical score, in creating it and readapting it for the stage, there are certain characters, certain plot lines that we couldn't use in this particular version. It was just part of my fun that I wanted to take small sections of uh, characters and songs that we had lost and repurpose them and weave them into uh, the score proper. It's about, you know, finding your home, falling in love, and discovering who your family is. Making sure it all fits, we went behind the scenes to see how the pieces are put together as Lila received final adjustments at Eric Winterling's costume studio. Some cheats are this belt that accentuate her tiny little waist, <laughs> but meant to look like a big man's belt that she found somewhere. As for that iconic blue gown. We are making her dress suit her as best we can. And we, I was just remarking that uh, Eric's work looks incredible up close and on stage. And uh, I think that's one of the great things oh, about Eric's you. work is that <laughs> they're clothes, they're clothes, they're not just costumes. I'm excited about all the costumes. It's really hard to pick one that I don't love, absolutely. Costumes are one of my favorite things and they really help me get into the character. You know, I, I wanted fabric that moved, so there's an extra floaty layer here. And um, the, the crystal beads are something that was our, our invention here for, for Broadway. I feel like a princess, which is amazing. <laughs> and what romance is complete without an equal match for this princess? Zach Adkins, Broadway's Dimitri, sat down with Lila to offer advice and discuss Anya's journey. These parts that we play, Dimitri and Anya, are some of the hardest singing parts on Broadway right now, or on tour right now. They literally take up all of your energy every single night. She'll be traveling via plane or via bus um, to a new city, and it really takes away that, that much needed relaxation time. I think Dimitri teaches Anya to be a little bit more patient. <laughs> because I think she just wants to go, 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 and sometimes it is important to evaluate. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really interesting, like from the moment Dimitri and Anya meet on stage, they push each other's buttons in a way they probably have never experienced before. They're very quick to, to fight with each other, and that's very much the romantic part of their relationship too, is the <laughs> yes. fighting. Yeah. And so you get to see that. And they have these weird connections, but it all comes from a place of, I don't really like you, but yeah. I like you a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's always like kind of the playfulness that yeah. goes on on stage. Fans of the show, known as Fanastasias, truly love the musical. The show seems to strike a chord with a lot of young people who are on a journey to figure out who they are. Not necessarily specifically Anya's journey, but a journey into womanhood or manhood or adulthood as themselves. And they come and see our show and they're like, okay, I, I recognize these people who are just trying to figure out their own journey to find who they are. When we meet people, they're like, oh, this is just beyond what I could expect from a Broadway musical. Now audiences across the country and soon around the world will be entering the theater and journeying to the past. I want them to feel determined, and I think I want them to feel like they can do anything that they put their mind to. Yeah, I think I would want the audience to take away that everybody's on their own journey, and there's no right way to take that journey, and it's gonna pull you in a thousand different directions, but, you know, being true to yourself and remembering what made you who you are to start with is what's gonna get you to the end of that journey. The North American tour of Anastasia is coming soon to a theater near you. Check out Broadway Across America, Broadway Balances America, or you can always go to our website, thebalancingact.com, for all the show information, tour dates, and more. For behind-the-scenes access to Anastasia, Andrew Lloyd Webber's School of Rock, Come From Away, Miss Saigon, Cats, Go backstage with Broadway Balances America. Get an inside look at your favorite shows before they come to a city near you.
The day-to-day -day management of diabetes takes constant vigilance of blood glucose levels, diet, exercise, and medication. Thanks to Sensionics and their quest to advance CGM technology, people with diabetes can better manage this disease and live healthier lives. We travel to my hometown of Atlanta, Georgia to speak with a top endocrinologist and hear how one of his patients is helping others along the way. Let's take a look. When I was 23, I was living in New York City. I was just starting a new job and I needed drug testing for the job. The doctor calls me and tells me he has good news and bad news for me. What do you want first? And I said, I'll take the good news first. He goes, well, you passed the drug test. I'm like, oh no, I knew I was gonna pass the drug test, so what's the bad news? And he said, I think you have diabetes. The blood just drained out of me. I said, what? I went to the hospital, they tested my blood sugar again, and they immediately gave me the results that my blood sugar was elevated above 500 and told me that I absolutely had diabetes, and I was shocked. Dr. Bruce Bodie is a diabetes specialist at Atlanta Diabetes Associates and has spent his career focusing on the treatment and management of diabetes. Diabetes currently in the U.S. affects about 35 million people. It's about 10% of our U.S. population. Diabetes is caused by a relative deficiency of insulin. The insulin is made from the beta cells of the pancreas People with type 1, they don't make any insulin. The beta cells were destroyed by, by their own body immune system known as autoimmune disease. The remaining 90% of people with diabetes are type 2. And this is a combination of insulin resistance, typically people who are overweight, poor eating habits, minimal exercise, but also genes play a role. There's a third form of diabetes known as gestational diabetes, which occurs during pregnancy. It's associated with the hormones of pregnancy. Unfortunately, there's almost 80 to 100 million people in our country with prediabetes. These people typically have no symptoms. They need to change their lifestyle. They need to be more active, eat healthy, and if you can do that, you have about a 70% decrease in the risk of developing diabetes. They immediately put me into the hospital to get my blood sugar under control because it was so elevated. The first thing that I was thinking is what's going to happen to me now and, um, and how do I control this? Looking back, I had many symptoms. I was very tired. Um, I was incredibly thirsty. I, I remember going to my, my refrigerator and taking out half gallons of milk and orange juice and actually chugging it from the refrigerator. And who, who does that, you know? But I just thought I was thirsty. Um, I was going to the bathroom a lot, but I thought that it was because I was drinking a lot. I didn't know, and you didn't hear about it as much as you did today. There wasn't the awareness that's around now. Along with the symptoms Laura experienced, other symptoms of diabetes include increased hunger, blurred vision, numbness or tingling in the hands or feet, and unexplained weight loss. Dr. Bodhi explains the complications of long-standing diabetes. The complications of long-standing diabetes, the number one uh, complication is cardiovascular disease. You also have an increased risk of a stroke. And the other complications is damage to your eyes, uh, which can lead to uh, blindness. And you can also develop kidney damage. The number one cause of heart attacks and stroke is a combination of high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and elevated glucose. They can develop infections. They can also develop uh, marked weight loss. And if not detected, they, they can present in a coma and with very, very high elevated glucose levels above 1,000. When you have diabetes, there is nothing that you do in your life that you don't think about the fact that you have diabetes before you do it. So everything that you do now is completely something that needs to be thought about. I feel it's really important for diabetics to, to work out and to exercise. I exercise 
pretty much every day. I run, I bike ride with my kids, I play tennis, I'm a tennis addict. That's something also that you have to constantly manage is what's happening to your blood sugar while you're exercising. The one place where diabetes affects me the most is when I'm, when I'm going to bed at night, when I'm sleeping. Um, when you go to bed at night, you want to know that your blood sugar is going to be stable overnight. And if it's not, you want to be able to be notified that it's not. And that is the hardest part about, about being diabetic to me is that when I go to sleep at night, I don't know what my blood sugar is going to be in two hours or four hours or six hours. The evolution of testing your blood glucose levels started with the finger stick and progressed to what is known today as traditional CGM. Although traditional CGM has helped many patients manage their blood glucose, it still has its shortcomings like frequent sensor changes, painful self-insertions, skin irritation from adhesives. Everyone with diabetes needs to know their glucose number. If you do not know your glucose number, it's very difficult to self-manage your diabetes. So the benefits of having any CGM is you know your glucose right at that time. You know what happens overnight. Are you going low or going up? You also know the rate of change. The benefit of CGM right now is that on average, they drop the A1C almost a half a point, which is very significant and they reduce the risk of hypoglycemia upwards of 30 to 40 percent. I have used so many different tools to take care of my diabetes. Back when I first got diagnosed for the first 10 years, it was the finger sticks and then it was into the continuous glucose monitors. Because I'm a working mom and super busy and I'm, I'm exercising all the time and I, I really never stop and, and, and I don't get a good night's sleep, I really need a CGM that takes the best of all the worlds and puts them together. One novel device that utilizes fluorescence technology to deliver highly accurate glucose readings is the Eversense CGM system, the first and only CGM system with a sensor that lasts up to 90 days for long-term glucose monitoring. It can provide real-time glucose readings and trend information that are sent directly to your smartphone. Eversense has a removable smart transmitter that's low profile and has the flexibility to be removed and reattached without wasting a sensor. In addition, the transmitter provides on-body vibe alerts that you can see, feel, and even hear, which can provide an additional safety advantage even during sleep. Lastly, traditional CGM wear time can be challenging for patients and their physicians. Among other things, sensors can fall off and in any case must be changed every 10 to 14 days depending on the brand. This often results in patients using their CGM less often. The Eversense long-term CGM system with its 90-day sensor, however, fits nicely into a patient's lifestyle. Real-world adherence with Eversense is 92% at one year. So one of the characteristics I really love about Eversense is that I'm going to be able to have these on-body vibe alerts that are gonna let me know when my blood sugar is low or high without everybody else knowing around me what's going on and without me having to test it for myself. With Eversense, the, the thing that I like most about it is that the sensor stays under my skin and the transmitter is removable so I can take it on and off to fit whatever lifestyle thing I have going on at the time. When we come back, we follow Laura along as she has her first ever since sensor placed by Dr. Brody. Because the Eversense sensor is placed under the skin, we have to discuss exactly where it's going to be inserted on the upper arm. Eversense provides a template that makes it easy to measure where it's going to be inserted. To insert the sensor, it's important to establish a sterile field to avoid introduction of bacteria. We then will numb the skin Next, we make a small incision. Using custom tools, we create a pocket and then place the sensor underneath the skin. Every patient receives one-on-one -on -one training, product information, and take-home instructions after the sensor is placed to ensure a smooth transition. I'm really looking forward to being able to sleep at night and to not having to change my sensor all the time and to, to seeing how this works. For more information and to get started with Eversense CGM today, please visit EversenseDiabetes.com. And as always, for more information, go to our website, TheBalancingAct.com. And by the way, we're going to have more on Laura's journey next month. And you don't want to miss that.
Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. So long.